Hey everybody, welcome back to Clean Fill Wanted. This week we will be making a tote for all the utensils that don't necessarily need to be in the utensil drawer. I'm gonna be using this piece of wood that I'm gonna show you a shot of. It's been drying for about two months in here. I just sharpened this crosscut saw and it's gliding through this wood like a hot knife through butter. So smooth that I got my thumb, yeah. There is an eight inch radius curve on my number five blade. So I was using that to get rid of all the rough sawn fiber on these boards. Get it down to roughly to the shape. It got most of the boards down to about seven eighths of an inch. I have one piece here for the bottom panel, which I'm gonna saw in half and book match. With most panels, you plane them together so that you know they, they will butt up perfectly together. The reason I jumped right on this bottom panel piece was I, I wanted to glue it up before I went on to worry about anything else. Then I marked out and sawn all the side and end pieces to the correct height. I hate to pat myself on the back, but I did a pretty good job with the rip sawing this time. Then I took these boards and I planed the edges so that they were the, all the same height and there was at least one square edge on them. That square side I just made, I used that to uh, mark out and saw at least one square edge to these boards. And with that, I was able to mark out the other end to get all the lengths correct. While I was at it, I put a square side on the bottom panel. And to make the groove, I pulled out my Stanley 45, though you could do this with a saw and a chisel, so don't worry about that, but if you have this, you're gonna use it. Then it was time to mark the shoulders of the rebates for both end pieces. I used a saw and a chisel to knock off some of the material at the uh, far end so that it wouldn't break out as easily when I came to use my moving Philister plane, or Philister, whatever. You could do this just as easily with a fine tooth back saw and a chisel. Okay, so it's the second day. I'm back out here. Yes, I'm wearing the same clothes. Continuity. And it's raining. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna clean these up because it does annoy me. I do want this box to look rustic, but uh, not that rustic. <laughs> I want it to look a little bit better than that. The knicker on my moving filster is not aligned, so it's actually leaving a fairly rough edge. I have a stop dado on both of the end pieces that's, that's gonna hold the center divider in place. Chisel out one side. Use the actual board that you're going to use in the middle, wedge it up against there, roll it over, and mark the far side, and, and chisel out the rest. I did flatten it with a router plane, but you could just as easily get what you need by using a chisel. I didn't know the length that I would actually need for the divider. I put the box together on top of it and was able to use its dimensions to mark out on that piece where it would be, adding in the stop dado depths. I also used this same process to mark out the height of the handle. At that point, it's finding the center of this handle piece and marking out the actual handle that you need. And the stop dado is the same depth as the groove on the sides and the ends, so I was now able to use the handle to mark out the width of the uh, panel at the bottom. And you use the same process to figure out the width. Of course, I did it in a really roundabout long way, 
but you, you'll figure it out. The panel itself is a little less than a half of an inch thick and I needed to taper down the ends to a quarter of an inch thick so it would fit into the grooves and that's what I'm doing here. There's nothing more satisfying to use than a sharp auger bit. Just use a simple coping saw to saw out the rest of that handle. While this piece is still out, I'm gonna use a spoke shave, rasps, sandpaper to round over this handle slash divider piece while I can still easily get to it. I assembled the box to mark the height of the haunch on the tenon for the stop dados on both ends and cut those out. And to be fair and honest, I did go back numerous times to, to fit this joint so that it would sit or seat well into the uh, stop dado. I don't like manufactured rustic looking nail. I kind of create my own just by getting galvanized nails and hammering them with a ball peen hammer. And then comes the glue up, which you plan out your clamping, you plan out your gluing. And I had all the clamps ready. This thing was locked down like Fort Knox. And I came back a couple hours later and I started sewing off the horns. Yeah. Yep. Um, I rushed. The glue was not set. I rushed. I didn't plan out the clamping. I rushed. This is a much better way of clamping, too. <laughs> Moment of truth. <laughs> the box was holding together now, so I gingerly planed the uh, the top so that all the joints were flush and used my plane to slowly round over the top edges. I used the steel wool and vinegar mixture to darken the wood, age it with a few coats of boiled linseed oil and a couple coats of shellac. So this turned out a lot closer to what I wanted it to look like than I thought it would. I'm not gonna put a picture up here because I don't have rights to the image, but I will put it on my blog and I'll put it on my Instagram so that you can see. That'll be down in the description for a $7 board. Rough sawn. I think it was a pretty good, it's a pretty good job. I'm pretty happy with this thing. Few things to take away from this. First thing is these planing stops that you'll see me use in it. Um, I have two of them, a thinner one and a thicker one there. Different sizes of wood. I got that idea from the Renaissance Woodworkers Bench. Fantastic idea. Second thing to take away from this, I did go back and reshape the skew on this moving filister plane. Um, but I have a nick on my nicker, go figure. And it's not actually parallel with the slot, the mortise that it's sitting in, or I shouldn't say, uh, yeah, perpendicular to the slot that it's sitting in. So. It's leaving a ragged edge. Third thing to take away from this is clearly, you, you saw, I was rushing. <laughs> There's nothing else to say about that. It's just one of those things, like if I had a nickel for every time that I told myself to, to slow down and don't rush, I'd, I'd have like $2.40.